Hi guys, it's Bitcoin from The Big Jubowski in this second to last round of the season. Um, I'm currently ranked pretty good. Actually, like if I uh, win this round, I would get my highest rank yet. So I'm at 119 and I would assume a win gets me somewhere around uh, rank 70, 80 ish. I don't know, probably 80. Um, so while that looks good, my current round does not look super good. I am fighting a guy called Harold, at least I assume it's a guy, uh, from Rogue French Force Endor, has uh, 9.7 mil GP, so about 1.5 over me. Um, roster wise, yeah, I mean, I haven't really been going through these a lot in my videos. He's got the Wampa Omicron. I believe this guy actually has eight Grand Arena Omicrons, something like that. Um, so he has like major advantages over me. But what he doesn't have as an advantage, historically, is he does really poorly at fleets, actually. Um, he hasn't one-shot a negotiator for the life of him. And he runs the Hyena lineup against Executor and has been failing that a lot, too. Because if you mark Razorcrest, you're just dead. Uh, which I don't really know why he does have some fact, but I guess he just doesn't know the counter. Um, so I tried to set a board to trick Harold. And it honestly feels like someone else is playing as a counter or something. Because on defense he's done stuff he has never like done in that specific way anyways. Which is keeping his JMK on offense and setting JML on defense. Then he said Malak under Ray. Also weird. Like I either like theory one is someone else is playing the account, or theory two maybe more likely. He didn't set a new defense and this was actually against the previous opponent or something. Because there's no reason whatsoever to set Malak under Ray against me because I don't have Starkiller. So I just don't really see a point in what he has done on defense. And then on offense, he also managed to actually one-shot my teams. I didn't set a super strong defense besides the GLs. But he only has SLK on offense, he has a Starkiller, and he has... Uh, what's the other one? It's going to be JMK, which he never does. So I'm assuming he used JMK on Ray because Starkiller doesn't really do a particularly good job there. Then he must have used SLK on SCE. And then in the back, a counter he has also consistently failed. He must have used Bounty Hunters on Lord Vader. That's my theory. Or maybe he's one of the very few people that managed to beat Ray GK uh, with Cat, etc. with his Starkiller. It's a possibility. Maybe he pulled that off, but almost nobody has. Um, so I don't know, I put Watt in here under Lord Vader as well to immediately trigger Maul into going after uh, the Bounty Hunter counter if he would use that, but it doesn't seem like it has really done anything. So he got a really high score against me, 4 GLs on defense, while I have 3 for offense. Uh, no problems here either. As mentioned, those walls are weak, but really I just fully expected him to fail on one of the GLs or to have to multi-shot one of them rather. And then on fleets here, uh, he actually one-shot the negotiator, which in I couldn't find it in his history ever, anyways, he's never done. And then the executor, he had the two shots, but in the first attempt, I think I saw that this morning, as he uh, didn't attack the fleets yet, but then he did and uh, took out Houndstooth and Xanadu Blood. So I'm wondering if he used the first order counter there, and then uh, his malevolence on my negotiator. Or maybe he used the new ship, the Interceptor, and used that counter over there. I have no clue, but uh, he's done a really good job and it's going to be difficult for me to win. So uh, what's nice is that I'll be testing some new things I haven't done before anyways. So even if the round is a loss, which is looking pretty likely, uh, then I'll still learn something out of it. So I'm going to get started with gas against JML here. Because if that fails, then yeah, like... It, like all bets are immediately off basically and then I'll just be experimenting more probably and get more learnings out of the round. I can still try to clear or get as far as possible. Uh, it's also an interesting exercise to do but then I would probably prefer to run some counters that I haven't used before and uh, yeah learn more things that way than using the teams I was going to use anyway. So I've won at this once and I've lost once and the loss was against Old Ben and JKL, and I won against a similar team to this, but I believe there was Joe Lee instead of, might have been Anakin, I'm not sure. So let's uh, see what it does this time. That healing immunity is killer because I'm almost certainly going to lose Rex here. 
And if I lose Rex, there is no form up, there's no cleanse, there will be very few attacks. So yeah, this is almost certainly the loss right there. And I wonder if uh, Anakin like at all has any kind of uh, preference for going for Rex there. If that's going to happen every time or if it's just, haha, here's a 1 in 4 chance that's going to happen. And now you lose. That's a lot of offense for me, but uh, yeah, I'm about to lose everyone here. So in my previous fight, Rex took a turn now and that allowed me to stand up really quickly. Now it just straight up doesn't happen and then uh, it's pretty much a loss. There's nothing I can do here. I'm not even countering this guy, so... I get decently close, but it's just not good enough. So that's the loss for the round right there. So again, like similar to the round against Ike Ike, I think like if you're expecting me to win, uh, <laughs> just turn it right off, save yourself the time. But uh, if you want to see something new, then I guess I'll be running my counter I was planning to use here, which is a lighter version of the J uh, JMK No Cat. And then I'm using Mace this time actually, rather than GK. So it changes the fight a little bit, because you don't have uh, GK's cleanse, which is one cleanse less. I do use Shock here, because then I have the full uh, Galactic Republic team, I get a bunch more speed. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will help me a bit more than if Padme was in there. So let's get going with that and uh, see what it does. I'm quite curious if the turn meter swap is going to be handy at any point. So what I have to do for the first move here definitely put up the damage immunity on Mace, but I have to target Thrawn, because I thought Mace was going to assist, because I'm pretty sure my Mace is actually weakest, but all right. So the idea was there to get an ability block on Thrawn, completely failed, uh, not a problem. Let's see here, I'll stealth, no, I'll put crit immunity, no, Mace is going to take a turn, that's not useful. Uh, I'll put it on herself, get that speed up. And seems like Mace has dropped his, uh, what's it called there? His resilient defense, I believe it's called. So I get the worst possible fracture. That in itself is going to be a huge problem. Uh, Shatterpoint is on Darth Vader. So what I'm going to do here is swap over to JMK to get that ability block on there. And I'm just going to keep trying to target Thrawn, who now has the, uh, what's it called? Let me just heal this guy, actually. Who has the Shatter Point. Would be great if Thrawn could go down before Lord Vader Ultimate, but I'm not exactly counting on it anymore. Maybe, yeah, this should do it. Uh... Got him. Okay. Really poor timing for the Merciless Massacre for Darth Vader anyway, because there were no debuffs on my end. But uh, I think I'm going to have trouble with the Lord Vader ultimate, as it's going to be quite strong. So typically you actually kill Royal Guard first here, but because my uh, Ki Adimundi was fractured there, that was just not an option. I do get very good ultimate timing here to cleanse all of that. So that's going to help me a ton. Um, I'll go for some control here. And I might actually be able to kill this guy as he's quite squishy. And I'm not even going to bother with Maul here because uh, Maul is going to unload anyway. So Mace loses the taunt. As long as I don't lose Mace, I don't mind too much. Let me do that. And this time I'm going to stick with Royal Guard. Ooh, that's really, really nasty. That's going to be a problem. Uh, target Ki Adimundi here. Yeah, it looks like I have to get another target out first again. All right, Royal Guard at last. So actually this counter works quite nicely and like even with the fracture there, which I think makes this a perfect test. Um, like what happens in the worst case scenario, your attacker gets fractured, JMK wouldn't suffer too much. Shakti, like she had already done her cleanse anyway, so 
in at that m moment in time she's really just sitting there uh, I don't think that would have mattered so with that in mind this was I think the best possible test I could have done and uh, well I mean it's not one yet I can definitely drop someone to uh, dots here still or to GM uh, sorry Lord Vader just whacking someone out yeah, Mace is getting really close here. My Mace is only Relic 3, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, I'll do the cleanse here to get... to save uh, Ahsoka there. So it looks like it's probably more difficult to get good banners. And yeah, I lose Shaq here. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, I think I'll put healing immunity on him. And I have to be a bit mindful of the time, but I think I got this. So banners, more difficult probably, but if you want to save GK for your Starkiller team, for example, or for your Omicron Qui-Gon Jinn team, if you run that, then uh, you can do that. Uh, next up, I will fight the SCE team. And what I can do now is I can try to run Grievous on that. That would then allow me to run SLK on the Ray team. And then I can run my own JML against his JML, even though he's preloaded. Uh, that might hurt quite a lot. So I'll see if that's going to be the smartest choice. But uh, maybe there's still a chance I can full clear that way. And this is definitely something I wanted to test. I wasn't going to do it otherwise if I would have won that first battle. I could have run uh, SLK on SCE for very good banners. And then my JML on Ray for good banners too, and then I would still have Grievous for something else. But since that's no longer an option, let's actually see if I'm able to beat a team like this. So one thing that I can try to exploit, I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but is triggering Darth Revan's health equalization, as it's going to take SCE lower, and maybe then I have a chance at picking SCE off early. However, the Sith Empire Trooper, he's going to be a problem, so... Let's see what it does. Don't want to stress this round too much. Uh, as I just already lost the wiggle room I had in banners and there's probably still plenty of strong teams to beat. So let's just see what I can do. All the debuffs happen. Get target lock on SE. I'm not going to heal my Newt here. I don't really mind Newt dropping if he does. I do mind that. That's really, really annoying. So I need my B1 heals. Hmm. Not happy with that. Uh, I'll cleanse the debuffs here. Yeah, now Magna is going to be taunting. I'm not uh, dropping Newt anymore. So he's almost certainly going to reach his ult. One thing I am wondering about is how SCE is not getting debuffed. Maybe I had Corrupt Battle Meditation there and I didn't notice. That must be it. No, SE is definitely resisting here. Is there anyone on the team who provides? Okay, yeah, the equalization started here. Gonna try it again. Ah, there's no way. Well, I'll put healing immunity on him. Uh, let's be careful here that I don't drop anyone. Uh, he already has healing immunity, so I use a special here. This is going to equalize again. Yeah, the deceived is being a problem here. Hmm, and I don't want to. I definitely don't want to kill anyone off. So I think uh, this is not going to work at the current rate. It's deceived is all over. I'm taking too many turns here, and I don't want to break my uh, train either, because SE is already close. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a loss. Uh, maybe I can somehow control her. Yeah, that's dicey. Not the smartest move. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the AoE, so that in the event you would test something like this, you would see, like, okay, it's possible to pick part of the team off. Though Deceived is disappearing, so let me just hit... 
set once more and do a basic on him as well but yeah grievous just got it again so i think after a while you just have too much deceived on the team and it spreads and you just have trouble and then it just doesn't really work anymore like sc is crazy low uh, i'm gonna basic here because i don't want to kill but still a fallen yeah now he moves before me anyway so that's uh, pretty much game over so I'll just kill three in one go. Could have maybe done that sooner and tried to salvage it, but I don't think it works. I'll have to see if I can still pick off set. Just to give you an idea if this is realistic at all. Well, as mentioned, I wasn't going to run this anyway, but now it's good to know that... Uh, like I was thinking at the beginning, well, I could also do Grievous here and then save my gas team for something else, but it's just not really a preferable choice. So always up for a Beskar Mando test against Omicron Aiden, especially at Relic 7. So you get worst case scenario here, cooldowns messed up, turn meter pushed back, they do all their specials. Uh, actually Magma didn't go yet. So now the choice here, I think I have to, like, IG is going to take a turn. That's not going to be the problem. So let's put this on bow. He doesn't get to taunt. But it's kind of unlikely he's going to be the target. So there's no crit immunity from shore or anything. So then I'd rather do this to push back their turn meter. Even though, like, it's handy to do that when I put up the birds. I'm going to get to 20 birds. Almost certainly. This is going to get me countered, but he can take it. And I need to do some AoE to get up there. Now this one is beautiful timing. Get rid of that protection up and get my birds up there. And then pick off item and game over. Uh, might actually... Okay, that's unusual. I don't really lose her too often. But that's also why I typically put that damage immunity on her. Because the AI really seems to like targeting her. Uh, but in this case, I think there was also another case where I lost her. It's not a big deal after uh, Aiden is killed. But ideally for banners, you want to avoid it, of course. Keep in mind though, minus is Relic 3. I think she has literally leftover mods with bad speed. Uh, what I could have maybe done is, when I had that stun earlier, is stun Snow Trooper. I'm not sure if he was the one who killed bow but i think he might have been because uh, he's definitely a big damage dealer so that's just something to keep in mind if you're running the counter like who do you want to stun you get that chance with quill at some point uh, typically i like to go for death or snow is they're the most threatening magma is yeah kind of a non-event his damage is really really sad So still a 62 despite losing a character. I think that's awesome. And this was a pretty good team, so. Okay, out of total curiosity, absolutely no clue if this does anything. But let's see here, what if I send CLS on that JML team? You get like, look at how much protection he gets back. It's completely ridiculous. And how much turn meter he has as well. So. In theory, I could keep removing that, but in practice, I mean, the healing on his team is absurd. Uh, so I'll stand swap, even though it wastes my TM gains. Uh, it's kind of my only chance at dispelling the buffs there. Uh, let's buff up. Go away, Anakin. Nobody likes you. He really did ruin that, that uh, what was the counter I used? Gas counter. Okay, it's closed, but oh, I got him. All right, nice. It's a good test. If you ever send in gas, you leave it the way I did. CLS has a chance. It's not over yet, of course, but I think uh, uh, maybe I should kill Anakin first here. So Chewie can kill off Grandmaster Yoda. I don't really want to trigger Anakin again, so... Hmm. 
I think I'll get him out. Let's just keep it simple here. Uh, let's just do this. Dispel all those buffs they worked so hard for. Stun Isla before she starts countering. And see ya. So this time I want to save my Shakti to actually go with a bad batch. See if today is the day where I can ability block Ray and it looks that way, but then Ray Jedi Training cleanses her. So it's as if it never happened. Uh, I will not AoE because I'm just going to uh, get feared. Get the stun on everyone. Call Grandmaster Yoda. I should maybe take it easy with that until Ray's... Uh, What's it called? Inspiration is gone there. And it's very unlikely I'm gonna get through Ray here before her ult. I can certainly try. Uh, but <laughs> that actually went way faster than I thought it would. So one thing I could do here is now go for Malak, but that Inspired really needs to go. So uh, I'll just basic here actually. AoE this time. Ah, uh, it wasn't a crit. Dang it. He's got good crit chance, why wouldn't he be critting? Come on, Jolie basic. Get it done, yes. Uh, with that out of the way, I can... just get my one hit in on Malak here. Yeah, that was as expected, that's the risk if you don't... Uh, Oh, got to think here. If you don't get it out of the way uh, soon enough. Uh, what's smart here? I think I'll go for Malak here. Okay, good. Hopefully land an ability block on Ray. Nope. And now let's see if I can get Ray out of the way before secondary whirlwind damage kills me off. It's a sad day for crits it seems, but hopefully the crit chance up is gonna change that. See ya mate. So we heal up Grandmaster Yoda. Heal up Anakin. Well, I don't really need to bother for banners actually, just realized. Just a habit. It, I mean, I guess it's part of testing. It's also seeing if you run something like this, can you actually get to full banners or not? Because if not, it's something you need to keep in mind. Uh, I do like to be thorough about these things, even if the battle is lost. But uh, in this case, I'll just hurry it up. As you can, what you like typically, if you want to do this, if you want to get to full, the easiest way to do it is really you just get a character into damage immunity, even if the others are still alive, just keep focusing on that character with assist calls. And you won't do damage to them, but you do heal. And that just makes it really easy to get to full. Uh, and you can do this move, for example, to control them if they have any AoE, like Resistance Hero Finier does. Though he's not the character you would leave until last, it would more likely be someone like Ray. You can also use Grandmaster Yoda's uh, foresight to like prevent you from taking any kind of damage. So there's a lot of tricks you can do there to recover your banners after Ray is dead. But uh, yeah, I just explained them here rather than doing them. What is that team? Okay. Uh, okay, I want to repeat this. I recently did this uh, Night Sister counter. However, in this case, it's with Bo-Katan lead. And with her ancestral armor, she's gonna dispel and gain tenacity up. So that should make it a lot tougher. Uh, so that's definitely something I wanna test. 
Never know if it comes in handy. So we've got Django as a time bomb. And then the leadership special is going to be super annoying. So let's see if there's anything I can do there. Um, what I, they don't have here, which they did have under armor lead recently, is of course a lot of protection up. So I've got a couple options here to try to kill someone. I didn't check health and protection. Probably should have. Uh, smartest thing is probably to control Django would be my guess. Or Bo, because Bo is an AoE daze. And I guess the AoE daze is most dangerous. So I'll go for her. And that also triggers my Talzin's uh, unique Zeta. Now I can pick, I can group attack her out. I think I won't because they don't really have healing mechanics. And my Asajj is going to go next anyway. So this way I get to attack two characters. Maybe even stun a third. Uh, secondary damage killed there. Yeah, this is not too bad. And Ganderous AI is kind of stupid and always starts with that AoE. Only thing I have to be careful of now is if Django kills someone, he will get everything back and it's going to be a perma kill. Everything is in his protection. So I definitely have to kill him off once uh, anyone on my team is low. But not much of a problem. So this team is actually like the armor version was a lot stronger. I wonder how the AI uses uh, that lead unique thing. I don't know what it lead unique what the hell is that even man i've been pretty tired recently which you may have noticed like in general i'm a bit low energy though maybe i'm always that way but uh sometimes i say such non-sentences it literally doesn't even mean anything their their leadership unique but that's a good one i've got to remember it um yeah i'll try to work on that i just tend to get up in my head while fighting and then doing commentary at the same time it's more difficult than you think in a way. So this is what I wanted to run against good old Maurice. Um, which I guess I'll do now is Shaq with a bad batch. Uh, why don't I just go to bad batch? So many questions. Or did I? Oh. oh, you know how I was like, I don't want to use my Shaq with JML. I already used Shaq with JMK. Like, what am I even talking about? She was literally not even in the screen a minute ago. So that gives you a clue as to how awake I actually am. Which is not at all. Um, so then the question is, what is an interesting option here? So his dash is only 318 before lead. This is why I figured I would use bad batch on it. Uh, no stuns, that's not good. Really? Like, we're not doing that? Okay. Uh, then I think Dash is gonna hammer me pretty hard, which I'm not super fond of. If Omega survives that, I'll be really impressed. See if I can get Vandor out at least. Yep. And that actually pushed back the turn meter on uh, Dash anyway, so that's good. Get him out now. Uh, L3 just waving over there. Don't know why I find that so funny. It was. Right after that extremely exciting fight, I get to see fleets. I definitely still want to reach fleets to... Well, I'm gonna full clear, I guess, except if fleets mess up. Did he do the interceptor trick? He did. So a lot of people have been struggling on interceptor. And he also said executor without houndstooth. Uh, which is messed up for me because my piston is currently not fast enough as I had to move some mods around. So... I was gonna probably lose this anyway, even if I would have one shot the other stuff. So against that Interceptor fleet, which is definitely gonna be Interceptor, I'm actually really curious, I have been curious, if uh, the Radis is a counter worth considering. And the reason why I'm thinking about that is typically if they run TFP in the starting lineup, which lots of people might do, but now it's Thy Reaper to uh, push back your turn meter. But Radis is a really fast ultimate, so if you could beat Chimera to that ultimate, 
then maybe you'd have a chance at uh, being pretty clean about the fight. So I'm actually going to run that as a test, even though it's kind of stupid, uh, unlikely to work. But I just really like to know if it has any chance. So it's a bit tricky for Bo here to outspeed TFP, even if he's there. Uh, he's going to need a bit more than you see on him. But uh, yeah, I'm just curious. And in this case, Bo isn't there anyway. Uh, TFP isn't there anyway. So let's see what a somewhat decent fleet can do here. There's almost like I looked for footage to see if there's any kind of counter known at the moment. A lot of people have been struggling against this fleet. I have no clue. Um, so Die Bomber is certainly going to be taunting. So the question is if, if it's even worth lowering Darth Vader. Now I do have that Raze Millennium Falcon AOE if I get the chance to get it off, of course. So uh, if I would be able to pick off Darth Vader, I think I might have a somewhat better shot. However, Thai Reaper is still an issue. And Thai Reaper also has that protection up move. So I'm actually considering to go after that one first so that my turn meter does not get messed up on the capital ship as I do need to beat Thrawn to the ultimate. So let's try that for science sake. Assume that this is TFP and I would get to spec TFP out. Let's assume uh, I have to do it that way. And just see what happens. Um, I'll feed turn meter here to and just ensure that I keep him alive. All right, spinny trick. That aim is just so weird, like, don't know what they were thinking with that animation. This is also why I have to save the cleanse, because you take the burning, you take all the target locks, and it'll be a miracle if all three of these ships make it to my next turn. I'll probably have to call in Gauntlet, which I don't want to do, uh, or use the cleanse if I want to have any hope at picking anyone off. I'm just checking the abilities to make sure I'm not overlooking anything. Yeah, there's no kind of cleanse ability available, so I'll just do this. However, by doing the group attack, I dropped the Falcon's thrust reversal stack, so I shouldn't have actually done that, because it lowered the damage I was going to do on the other ships. So that was actually a misplay. But I think, like, you can already see this is not really getting anywhere. I think if TFP was there, you'd instantly kill a ship. That would make a pretty big difference. Without that, it's uh, probably just too tricky. So I could call in any other reinforcement, but if I want my Radis to get anywhere, then in theory I would have to do this. In practice, uh, yeah, it just gets killed regardless. So I'll probably back out. Maybe I can still do another test. Please don't kill me off. Come on, there we go. So given that there's no TFP, I'm like way ahead of this fleet and there's no a point in bringing FOTP, for example, I'll put Hunted on Vader to push back his turn meter, which got resisted, that is not good. Uh, I've got to stun him here and probably just take him out. They're still going to get the Interceptor in, probably. So here you want an Ability Block on the TIE Bomber. I could try for a stun, but why would you bother with a stun if you can get a guaranteed way to block the uh, Burning? It's because TIE Interceptor comes in and cleanses that anyway. So that changes something compared to the Chimera you usually fight or just any kind of TIE Bomber variant. Uh, in this case, there is that buff dispel. So even if you would have done the stun there, it wouldn't have done much but you'd make damage progress on a TIE Bomber. So uh, that's an important difference there. I could try to dispel this again, but two target locks on my end kind of defeat the purpose there. I don't have any cleanses on my end. That's also really important to note, uh, as I didn't bring the gauntlet, I already burned it with the uh, Radus test. So that's going to be annoying. There's also buff immunity on two ships here. Meaning I could call in Thai Echelon, but Thai Echelon actually isn't really taunting. So instead what I'd rather do is call in Consular, get some protection back. Try to get a stun on Thai Bomber. Didn't get it. Now I can pass a full turn and try to start making some progress. The Vader kill at the start helps, but there's no way I'm beating the whole fleet before uh, Chimera gets the ultimate off. So it's basically a guaranteed banner drop there. 
Uh, let's see if I can pick off this. It's such a squishy ship, but I did fine there taking that hit. So I'm not quite sure if he has a... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why he has a Relic Second Sister, of course. Um, hmm. So Thai Reaper. I could try to stun before the protection up. I think I'd rather go for this one. But it gets resisted anyway, so... And I think this is going to be the turn where Thrawn does ult. I'll try and stun here. There it is. And they go for the silencer, that's really crappy. Um, so for that reason, maybe bringing Echelon is actually better. Because then you get to... Maybe try and focus them on him. Uh, I think I'll back out of this too, since I'm testing anyway. I might as well just go all the way. So Rebels typically really struggle against the TIE Bomber lineup. Due to the burning, which just kills your assist chance. But let's uh, see what I can do here. So instead of wiggling, I'll start with the basic. And probably just group attack. I have to try to gun him down before a reinforcement comes in. Ah, the dodge. Are you kidding? Okay, got him. Let's see what happens next. Really curious. Interceptor comes in. Probably go for Biston. 27k. Uh, I might as well go for that ship now, I think. Got it. Um, I can't cleanse the target lock as I believe it was from Darth Vader. But I don't remember for sure, so let's try. No, okay, it was. Go for him next. He wastes that turn even though he could have killed, but capital ship got it. And like out of all the fleets, I'd say this one also has the highest chance of uh, killing ships on their end. No assist again. Uh, I mean, of killing off all the ships before Thrawn does the ultimate. So I, I've like, in my opinion, I've had a bit of bad RNG here, or some of their ships might have already been down. Now I know I'm leaving the Tie Reaper, and that's allowing them to get to ult quicker. But maybe that actually makes it a good test. Like, what if you can't get to the Thai Reaper? If it's there at all in the starting lineup. Just spec that one out. Yeah, so it gets there. Uh, I'm pretty sure if it hadn't been for those dodges that uh, I could kill them all off before the Chimera ultimate. But either way, I mean, this is likely going to be a pretty good success rate counter, I think. It's all about do you get the time bomber out. And that's of course very RNG dependent on your assists. I'll just do the AoE. Or I won't because nobody is doing anything. Come on guys. Well, there it is. I was considering to back out and still run Malevolence, but I don't know how often you're going to use that. Doesn't seem super likely to me. Uh, let's send a burner here. So it's funny because this guy is going to be enthusiastic about his fleet holding and set it again, and then look at the history afterwards and realize, oh, this dude was literally just throwing stuff at it and backing out. Uh, not ideal to leave Xanadu Blood last there, but maybe I needed a slightly more tanky ship. Dodge from TFP, awesome. Don't even need to do his thing anymore. Um, let's see if I can cleanse here. Maybe I can still get something good going. If I do the AoE, he's gonna stealth. So I think I'll just basic. Oh, the timing, so bad. That is really unlucky. Yeah, that's going to kill the clear, I think. Alright. 
Should have maybe gone for IG, but uh, that's life, calling spy. <laughs> okay. No comment. And I'll just end it right there. So, yeah, I think the fleet testing was still interesting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll just see who I fight in the last round. I believe the beard monk guy might be my opponent again. The guy from Call Patrol. Uh, so we'll see about that. Maybe I'll do some more testing because I'm not sure I'll be able to outsmart him twice. But uh, yeah, see you in the next round. And I hope you have a great day.